Welcome to Charting Change in Legal. I'm Ari Kaplan, an analyst that covers the legal industry, and I'm here with my friend Caroline Hill. Caroline, welcome to the show. That sounded like a, a bit of a downer. And we need Caroline Hill. I'm Caroline Hill. Hi, everyone. I'm editor of Legal IT Insider. It's great to be here, Ari. It's wonderful to see you and wonderful to have this conversation. There are so many things to talk about, notwithstanding the fact that we couldn't put one thing on a list of things to talk about. So <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have, all right, we've got yeah. something. Okay. So breaking. Is it breaking? breaking That's news. my favorite. So and so's been hired. Breaking Ilta. news. Yeah. At Ilta, we are going to do our podcast live. And my suggestion just before we came on air was that we buy those karaoke children's microphones with the sparkles on to, to take to Ilta so that everybody wants to be on our podcast. Amazing. With like flair, maybe maybe a balloons. I can just imagine streamers, yeah. confetti yeah. just following us around. We'll have we'll we'll hire an intern and they could just like pop confetti as we walk <laughs> through the exhibit hall. <laughs> I think I think that'd be something there. Like, did you see Carolyn and Ari? What's wrong with them? They're charting change in legal. So <laughs> I think I think we're on to something. Forget the postcard, which I just want to say I hope that the one person I sent a postcard to received it. And I'm so glad that he gave me the special secret super secret code, which I think was one, two, three, four or four, three, two, one. But that's, we really tried to come up with something pretty much unbreakable. And I'm the king of hide it in plain sight. I see that with my kids all the time when they were little. I'd be like, uh, they'd be like, yeah, where is this? I'd be like, I don't know. You got to find it. And it'd be like literally underneath a napkin on the kitchen table. Or something. <laughs> they'd be like, I can't find it. This is insane. You're the worst. And I was like, yeah, I'm terrible. And then I'd just like walk over. I'd be like, oh, whatever it was, thought, a piece of chocolate. I thought, I thought the one, two, three, four was my password because I'm head of security. I thought oh, we... yeah. <laughs> You're head of security for, for, for charting change and legal. <laughs> anyway. Okay. So, well, I guess we've said it. We're both going to be at mm -hmm. UltaCon. That's fantastic. I'm excited to see you. I haven't seen you in a little while. And I think that it will be a great event this year. It is in Nashville. Yeah. And there are several interesting things going on. And I think I will probably host a run on Wednesday morning. Oh, yeah. I have to coordinate that with Ilta, of course, but I'm guessing Wednesday would make the most sense. I'm currently, I don't know whether you feel the same. At the moment, I'm a little little bit conferenced out. I went to I Manage this week, which was actually was it last, no, it was last week. Last week. Mm -hmm. I wrote about it. I wrote about it yesterday. I'm losing my mind. I wrote about it yesterday. I posted it yesterday, but it was actually last week. Um and this we've got big hand this week. We've had lots of different conferences going on. We had legal tech fun, sorry, legal tech talk, not legal tech fun. Um, and there's a lot on social media about people going, don't worry if you're not at a conference, you're not missing out. It's OK. You can just do your day job <laughs> because there's the sort of fear of missing out thing going on. But I have to say, I managed was great. Um, it was in London. So they did their Connect Live um, last week and they it was really useful in clarifying they're quite information heavy in terms of um that's i guess these user conferences they're quite different from the big kind of conferences that i know you've been involved in and so have i recently um but i manage there's a lot of clarification around how they're going to be working with copilot and there was some news that they announced so link laters was there with their cio bruna polici who revealed that they have just gone live on I Manage Cloud um, and they've hired a head of AI <laughs> and they're rolling out Copilot. <laughs> so there were some great news announcements um, as well, which was kind of fun. Um, so yeah, but it's, there's a lot, there's just a lot on top of your day, on top of your day job at the moment. I echo the point about Connect Live. I went, I went in New York and really enjoyed it. So I also, and this is a, a point about people going to conferences that I try to emphasize, which is try to have random conversations with some of the exhibitors. I know that sounds mildly comical. Just, hey, how you doing? I'm Ari. What do you do? But I had several of those conversations. And I guess because of the nature of what you and I do, one of them, uh, I interviewed the CEO of one of the companies for my podcast, and we had connected from a, a, a while back uh, at, at a conference. And it was just great to speak to that person, but I didn't actually know that he would be the guest. I just met some people at the booth and started talking. The other uh, interesting thing was that I met an iManage partner in the Netherlands and the company's called CoFlow. 
And yeah. they mm -hmm. are a really interesting uh, dynamic partner of iManage. And so we were talking and the CEO said, oh, we're based in Amsterdam. And I thought, wow, I'm actually about to go to Amsterdam to serve as the MC for the Lexpo conference. And he said, oh, well, if you're in Amsterdam, uh, maybe we can have dinner. And sure enough, I had dinner with him and his colleague, and it was fantastic. It, they were just, you know, had great information on the industry, particularly in Europe, which is different. I think it's really important for people to recognize that legal and legal tech have kind of distinctions around the world. I feel like it gets lumped together. There are a lot of similarities, a lot of uh, common challenges, but the approach, different regulatory schemes within different regions and countries is interesting. And you want to speak to people who are resident there, who are doing business there, who are entering those markets or, or strong in those markets. And it was just a great, great conversation. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, the CEO's name is uh, Matteo and um, he and I and, and his colleague Lee had dinner. And it was just, it was just great. And it was a great capstone to what was an incredible Lexpo conference this year. So another event I encourage people to, to, to think about uh, attending because it's just like the perfect size. It's not too small, not too big. You can meet everyone. You can really uh, get connected there. And I think that's the biggest challenge. So I think that no matter what people do, if they're preparing for Ilticon, is to try to push your comfort to the point of having conversations with complete strangers, particularly people in the exhibit halls, just because they're eager to have those conversations. And I just think magic happens, like just serendipity. You, you find some common connection whether they're selling to you or not. I just think it's a really important um, part of this that I think people tend to avoid because they feel like, oh, I don't want to get into this conversation. But in fact, sometimes that's the best conversation you can have. What would your um, tip for people be? I mean, interestingly, CoFlow, I, they were I managed London um, and someone went, you've got to speak to these people because they're, what they're doing is really cool. Yeah, really smart another, guys. Another right. vendor, drag mm -hmm. me over drag me over to their booth there was no one there so coflow it'd be great to have a chat <laughs> and dinner yeah <laughs> why did you get to go to yeah. dinner well we uh, just had i have to eat dinner you must it was yeah you have to eat dinner <laughs> no it was just it was just it was you know what i also think it's really fun and i know that you travel a bit and i travel mm -hmm. a bit and it's fun to have the sort of random exchange of ideas or meet people for breakfast. I'm usually a breakfast, a breakfast guy. And I, I just think it's nice to be in someone's city, let them show you around. In fact, those, those Kovalo, uh, I think it started in South Africa. So it's a different, you know, the, the whole discussion was fascinating to me. What, um, what would, I, I don't know if you want to talk about what Kovalo do, but so well, if you do, that would be interesting. But otherwise I was going to ask you, um, what your tip would be in terms of engaging this sounds like a ridiculous question but mm -hmm. I think people find it really overwhelming like with the stands and also mm -hmm. you know do you go in and ask for a demo or do you just go what do you do and I must be honest with you I'm really guilty of not really sometimes engaging sufficiently I went to a conference the other day which had lots of different exhibitors and I really and I did lots of networking and it was useful but I realized afterwards that I hadn't gone down around the booth right at all. She had missed an opportunity because there were some really interesting exhibitors there. I did do one or two people, but typically people that I knew, to be honest with you. And there were some that I hadn't made the effort. And and I and it's not because of for me particularly feeling intimidated, but I do know that for some people it's a bit like, oh God, it's a bit overwhelming. And do you it, so yeah, so I wouldn't do it all. I totally agree with you. I wouldn't do it all at once, but I'm telling you, there were so many wonderful moments. I I met at the ALA conference in Denver a few weeks ago. They have an unusual number of travel companies that tend to exhibit at that particular event because those people are decision makers for logistical purposes and management purposes, a lot of leaders of law firms at that event. And I like travel and I find that super interesting. And I imagine that whatever the business discussion is, travel is cool. And I met with a, a gentleman named Ryan Spear, who is the CEO of Spear Travel Group. And we had coffee yesterday here. He happens to live nearby. So my suggestion is first to go and walk around during the quiet periods. That way you're not like taking their time because they're there 
for maybe you want to buy their product, but even if you just want to have conversations, they're happy to, I'm sure, especially there's a lot of downtime in those exhibit halls because there's lots of content at these events and you want to participate in that and then try to do it in pieces, maybe focus on the left side of the exhibit hall and then the right side or the center or, or whatever, and also recognize it's impossible to get to everyone. So just sometimes I see someone sitting by themselves and I'm like, hey, how you doing? Do they run? Yeah, sometimes they do. Sometimes they do. And then, of course, I'll say, I have a run tomorrow. You seem like a quite a good runner. Uh, why don't you join my run at 630 in the morning? And then they're just like, oh, my gosh, this guy can't get rid of him. So then He's they, of course, off. check their phone. They text themselves. They start texting themselves. Hmm, please, somebody like somebody come and help me. I Anyway, I think that I think that you're right, though. One thing I would also say is that I see some similar discussions at some of these events. So I've decided to like forget about any kind of FOMO. You can't get to everything and you can't be everywhere. Although I do root for them. So I love to see, you know, in a, in the one week in Amsterdam, Lexpo thriving and being super successful. And then a few days later in London, legal tech talk being successful and, and, you know, fulfilling its mission. So, and I love to see that I manage is somehow able to do a great show in New York and then replicate that in London. Relativity Fest London is taking place today as we speak. Yeah. I, I just think it's great. And there is a real appetite for these events. So look, I love it. I love to see that people are getting together and, you know, we missed it for a while. I, I, I say add more conferences, right? I, I don't have any issue with it. No, all right. I can't get any work done. That's the trouble. Like, I do love meeting people. It's in, it's interesting. You know what? Some, some of the content, some of the comments rather, after these conferences so legal tech talk was successful i know that a lot of people including i'll be honest with you myself um and i've been frank with bradley collins the ceo of legal tech talk that i wasn't sure i think a lot of people because we didn't know him or the brand were unsure it was last week it was you no know, week before um and it did go um really well so so um but a lot of people in the comments afterwards were putting being very frank and I thought this was quite interesting about being whether they're introverted or extroverted and whether they gain energy or whether they get drained by conferences and that's a real factor right so if you a lot of people in our sector are probably introverts I don't actually in America I think you're a lot better at analyzing you know personality types I'm always fascinated by it we don't tend to do it as much in the UK but you know, whether you're introvert or extrovert will also dictate how you interact and what you get out and whether you're drained or whether you're energized. I love meeting people. It energizes me. Um, but I just don't have enough time to do what I need to do going to all the stuff. <laughs> um, but it was fascinating reading the comments, you know, people going, I really need to have a lie down in a, in a dark room now. <laughs> well, because it, it, it does get overwhelming. And I also think you should know yourself. And even if you're I don't know how to describe myself, but I I'm I don't know that I'm an extrovert, but I'm definitely not an introvert. And yet there's only so much of the chit chat I can handle. Uh, but I do get energy from it and I do love seeing people like you. Like when I see what Ilta, I think that's gonna be wonderful. And I think that you see your colleagues that you've known for a long time and it's a great, great chance to catch up. Uh, but I also think everything in 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 moderation. Right. I'm all about chipping away baby steps, whatever, whatever you, phrase you like to use it, it. I remember when my son was traveling in Europe and he was concerned about not having enough time or not sure if he had scheduled the day with his friends correctly. And I was like, listen, whatever you saw is all that you were meant to see. I was like, let it go. And so I think the same is true of an event. Whatever yeah. sessions you went to, those are the sessions you were supposed to go to. And I hope you had a good time, you know, and, and whoever you met with, just make sure you make sure that engagement was rich, like you followed up with them, uh, which is something that I try to hold myself to, even if I follow up with them two weeks later. I will also say one other thing. It is so helpful when people share snippets of summaries from presentations and kind of it, it does several things. It gives credit to the people who took their time to present. It probably mm -hmm. acknowledges the conference organizer like Bradley or Rob Amirun at, at Lexpo or, you know, the team at, at iConnect, for example. And it also gives a resource. Like people will share and like that because they know that that's a genuine, it's not like, hey, I'm so proud of myself because I'm, you know, so good at being proud of myself. Like it's, it's much more of a, you know what? Like I saw a fantastic 
present I saw several fantastic presentations, but Nikki Shaver gave the keynote at uh, the second day of, of Lexpo. And it was just such a great discussion about change and how to navigate it. And I'm very interested in that. I do a lot of research on that. And so when I did a little summary, I made sure to include that and, uh, you know, to acknowledge how impressed I was with what people had done how much time they had taken i noticed their slides were great everyone had this great flow to it and so if you go to one of these events the other thing i would suggest is mention the folks yeah. who did the work and even oh i had a great conversation with ryan spear at spear travel group or mm -hmm. i had a great conversation with uh matteo pagani at, at at coflow and i just think that those things matter and they're such a great way to create a long tail a legacy of what you did there and i think that in itself will maybe keep a good level of energy because you'll have a little bit of a mission. It won't be just sort of meandering and picking up a piece of dark chocolate. That's a really good shout out socks. Um, so uh, BLT socks, the socks are an interesting trend and a total hit for sure. I, know, I only have confident socks. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> at BLTF, um, they had each stage had a chair, conference chair. Um, obviously at Lexby, you were the chair and that's great that you provided that summary. I think that's amazing. So so, um, but as BLTF, they had different stages and they each stage had a chair. And at the end of the conference, they provided a summary, which was really helpful because that for people like me, and I must be honest, with you, I'm always time poor. And I just included everybody's summary and then just bang, bunged it all together. Um, but it was, you're right, it was really useful in terms of some of the key findings. And so I would definitely encourage anybody, you're right, who goes to these conferences to provide like it was just that they provided the chairs provided bullet points of some of the key topics. It's really hard to do good coverage of a conference. Like so, I went to obviously Connect Live. I managed last week. They they covered a lot of content. Um, one of the things I'd like to share actually from from that conference um, was this analogy that kept flowing through. Um, and I don't know if they did this in New York, but obviously they were talking about AI a lot. Um, and Neil Araju's, the CEO's theme, um, which he kicked off and was followed up by others, was that AI is like electricity. Did they have this thing in New York? Like, So he said that AI is like electricity um, and it's no use until you apply, you know, use a light bulb and apply it to darkness. Or he said, Neil is very sweet, like, I said, or if you like toast, make some toast. Or if you <laughs> if you want heat to make it warm. Um, and he was saying that we should start thinking in those terms about how we're going to use, you know, how we're going to use it. And and I thought that was a great theme. Um, that was a bit of a digression, but 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 yeah. So um, it's hard to write good coverage. But I did I did cover a lot of content from the iManage um, conference. It, a lot of it was quite sort of <laughs> verbatim, <laughs> rather than me introducing my own thoughts, which I think probably you know be the next thing. Um, but yeah, no. So anyway, so 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 I'm a bit conferenced out, but I've got big hand tomorrow. And um, the legal tech talk was great. The only thing I'd say about the um, so legal tech talk had really international travel, like loads of people. I walked in with somebody who'd come from Abu Dhabi in the Middle East for it. There were people from all over the world. Um, the sessions were within the ex exhibit hall, so which was great because you didn't get taken away, um, and the the networking was really good. But the audio wasn't great, so you so you were sat in sort of designated per, by color, so purple, orange, etc., all around the outside of the exhibit hall. But as a result, it was quite noisy, so it was quite difficult to hear the speakers. So I don't know if they'll be able to do anything about that next year because some people said they really just couldn't hear. Um, but there was a lot of hubbub, a lot of trap foot, footfall around the stores and stands, rather. It's not a market, is it? Um, there was some that's fun. A, that, that's actually a creative approach to trying to keep people in the exhibit area, just like bringing lunch in or putting coffee nearby. And sometimes, like I was at a conference once and I noticed that the a booth wasn't getting a lot of traffic and i was like you know if you want i could totally help you just like bring over that coffee cart right next to your booth and you know you sometimes you have to do what you have to do to get people over but that's a challenge because i did a session at the ala conference in one of those venues where it was kind of open air that's not doesn't sound exactly like what you're talking about but it yeah. was open air as a means of getting people and i had a microphone and i really tried to you know make you know have fun with it just so that, oh, I see somebody walking by. You want to come to this session? This is 
this is like a fire session. You want to be here. And so it was, and there was another gentleman who was, I had actually just randomly interviewed for my podcast a few weeks before, and he was doing another session further down. And I, I walked over and I was like, listen, I don't want to say anything, but I'm going to have a lot of people here and they're going to make a lot of noise. So you better <laughs> up your game. And we were just like having a really fun time with it. And, I, you know, cause I just think, look, I want to do the best I can for whoever's sponsoring or whatever we're talking about. The audience is not, I don't want them to waste their time, especially right. if you're in the exhibit hall. It's an incentive because otherwise there's lots of distraction. So yeah. forget about just having people not take out their phone, but if there are bells and whistles going on and, and food and candy and stuff, you want to just try to keep it going. I think it, helps the speaker to make sure that they really get the audience involved and keep them engaged. So I'm <laughs> look, I'm loving, I'm loving all the stories about the conferences. I think it's great. I think that we're really seeing an, an interesting array of events that mm. allow people to either really dedicate their time and money and resources to a particular event that's large and, and will accommodate all the things they're interested in. And then you're seeing these sort of regional events that are thriving, like the master's conference, which seems to be taking place in, 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 in a, many, many, many American cities. And even I think they're, they're doing other things abroad. I mean, it's just, it's incredible. And I'm, I'm excited about it. I feel like it's almost like a conference Renaissance. Yeah, no, well, seeing people, you know, all together is great. And I can't wait to see you at ILTA um, in Nashville. I've never been to Nashville. Uh, and apparently I'm not really going to get to go this year either. Because apparently the conference is not really in Nashville. It's kind of nearby. But I'm going to try really hard to go actually into Nashville. Because you definitely should. I forget how many years ago it was in Nashville and that I went to it. But I want to imagine it was like 10 years ago it was, maybe it was even well, it was just before covid because oh it, oh was it just, i probably didn't go to actually it would be weird if i didn't no, go no, to no, that one like, it was gonna happen just before covid and oh it, oh the year of covid the year that it got cancelled the first year it got cancelled was nashville from memory because i was kind of i think i hadn't booked it but from that i did it all for the others and never got to do nashville and then it rotated and then we went back to washington or whatever and so i've never done nashville even though i've been to ilta many times over many years I've been editor since 2014 and this will be my first Nashville Ilta so super exciting um well Joy Heath Rush was on a panel that I was lucky to moderate and Denise Ash who's the event education manager for Ilta were both at Lexpo and oh. we chatted about it and it just sounds like it's going to be a super event this year and is you know it's sort of like a core legal tech event uh just generally, I wanted to say globally, but there are so many different events now, but it really yeah. does, you know, kind of bring everyone together for kind of a second time in the year. If you were to imagine legal week being that the kind of the beginning of the year event and Ilta being, being kind of like checking in and just sort of yeah. reconnecting with folks. And it's, I think it'll be great. I think Nashville will be super fun. I think, yes, it's not in town, but no. it's an Uber ride. It'll, you'll, you'll get there. You should definitely get there. There's a lot of, Nashville is a, is a really interesting, fun city. And, and as, as a big Taylor Swift fan, you know, I have to go there, right? Like, well, it's my great, children, great. So cross about the fact that I love Taylor Swift. They're like, they like, think that it's just the worst thing ever, but I absolutely love. The country. worst thing ever. She's the most popular human being on the planet. I mean, yeah. I just, you know, if she ran for president, she would win. She so would I, win. I, 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 I would I, I'm not American. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that would be an issue, but I do, I do think that uh, Nashville is great. I think you're gonna have a great time. So, you know, focusing on uh, politics, hey. <laughs> one, one more thing I wanted to just mention is that, mm. uh, you know, it's summer. Like summer is here. You know, summer has just arrived, and I mm. think that it, it's an interesting opportunity for people to casually connect with their peers. In a in a way that is less rushed or stressed in mm. in the summer, and I just find that either people, if they're going into the office, which they might be doing a little less of, right? It's summer historically, even if you were in the office five days a week, you get summer Fridays or casual days or whatever. But I think people should just think about taking advantage of some things and also of, of just connecting with people. And also if people have been out of the office, probably a great opportunity to see if they need 
work support, like ways to stand out. We've been having lots of conversations. I, I host this uh, webinar series for ACEDs, and we have lots of conversations about subtle things that you can do to either upskill or enhance your career. And a lot of it are, are sort of small gestures that have a big impact. And I think yeah. summer kind of lends itself to that. Right. It's a really great thought, actually. Although, I mean, I do wonder we we always used to talk about summer being quieter um and i do wonder if that is still i guess it must be the case because people still take holiday and they and people with kids often take holiday in the summer but it doesn't seem to slow down as much as it used to you know like so i feel like the days of being really quiet are not here anymore <laughs> uh, even in the summer but, but i take your point that's a really nice thought you know to kind of reach out and, and actually I've been trying to get rid of some of the noise that that takes my time that's not useful. You're so good about this kind of stuff, Ari. I know you you know you're very thoughtful about how you work and how you manage your time and might measure your time and um and I've been trying to delete things that are a distraction that aren't important on my time like for example you know things where perhaps it's algorithm dominated for, where I'm getting subjected to reels on social networking sites that I never chose to look at which take too much time they're so addictive right so meta sends me these ridiculous reels I'm deleting them all finally and then so then you know you have more time to do the things that you should be doing which is reaching out for a coffee to somebody <laughs> Go <laughs> being in person you're going to see somebody in person or whatever you know it's, it's quite interesting to ha maybe use this time of year as well to think through how am I spending my time is it valuable um am I t am I practicing what I preach to my children <laughs> the answer was no right uh, personal wellness exercise yeah. you know whatever but I also and I know this is gonna is gonna maybe shock people but I think it's you should use this opportunity to maybe think about and i never do this so the fact that i'm saying it is is a little bit comical to me but to think about what your plans might be if you do things for the holidays professionally send cards or gifts like that oh. creeps up that creeps up really fast i know i know it's crazy i know it's not even for the July, but like that really creeps up and all of a sudden you're like oh my gosh it's halloween and I don't know, and I don't even have time to order something. And it's a problem. It really, you know, especially busy professionals. I know you and I are, are, are active and work for ourselves. It's it's something. I might send you a postcard. I would love a postcard. I have listened to the episode after all. The 4th of July, because you got the code right. Well, you didn't actually, but I'll That's pretend right. you did. <laughs> I, I'm, the, I'm the actually the only, other than you, the only listener with perfect attendance. So I, <laughs> I listen every show. I listen to every single show. I'm the most, the second most dedicated, you get or a at least on par. That's right. I should get a postcard. I'll say, I'm going to send you a postcard from Ilta. Dear I, Caroline, it was so much fun to see you. I you hope you enjoyed Nashville. Over the pink fluffy karaoke mic as we're going around yes. with the, with the confetti. Woo! Yes. So that, so everybody, as we, as we close, look for our, the, the big microphone and the flare and yeah. we will have to you know we're just going to start popping confetti in the exhibit intern, hall if you want to yeah. be an intern to pop and, the balloon and help us out right <laughs> we will yeah. send you a postcard that's our new if you want to intern for charting change in legal and be one of our or, or a, a a separate broadcaster we could have like a team of roving reporters excuse me coflow what do you do we would love to know more and that would be actually that'd be pretty good. <laughs> so Caroline, we're just basically workshopping ideas for ourselves. Hmm, that would be pretty good. great way to get to know all the vendors. I love it. We get some speakers. Yeah. They get ready to get into the sessions. Everyone's yeah. going to be running away from both of us. That's right. Them. That's oh, right. Oh, no, we're going to cause cause chaos. I'm going to talk to Joy today. I'm going to be like, Joy, listen, we have this amazing <laughs> idea. Great way to force people. Caroline, we'll just ask people outside the exhibit hall. They'll run away right into the exhibit hall to all the booths. It'll be amazing. I think that I think we're onto something, Caroline. Uh, well, Caroline Hill, it's always a privilege. I, I can't tell you how much I enjoy these conversations. I'm not sure what they're about. I'm not sure what the listeners get out of it, but I think they're fantastic. And I look forward to seeing you and for us to speak soon. Thank you all for joining us for this episode of Charting Change in Legal. <laughs> Thanks, Ari. Thanks, everyone. Bye.